Hi, everybody. Welcome to My Osprey TV. It's Johnny Torres, and right next to me is Marie Gilmore from the Osprey Observer. How you doing? Uh, we want to introduce you to a new program we're going to be bringing to you from the Osprey Observer. And uh, every episode, we're going to talk about ways that you can support your community, ways that you can support your local businesses, and nobody better to do it than the editor-in-chief of the Osprey Observer. Hi, Marie. Hi. Hi, everybody. Actually, Johnny and I were working on this project for the last couple of months, and we've been brainstorming what best way to bring the video component to complement what we do in the Osprey Observer each and every month back into the world realm and get on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and live us everywhere we want to go. So it's just another way to help support our local businesses. So in light of everything going on with COVID-19 and the coronavirus, the quarantine, of course, we've been adjusting our business model at the Osprey Observer each and every day. And part of that is another way we can bring information to our community is through this program. So we knew an expert in the field. Johnny has all the equipment and the wherewithal to put this together. So we're so happy to partner with you and to bring more information to our community. Yeah, that's the crazy thing about this is that you and I started talking about this weeks before the coronavirus was okay. even an issue. You know, we wanted to find a way to continue to support the community, continue to support local businesses as the Osprey Observer has done for so many years. Uh, you know, we were so excited to get this project off the ground and then the coronavirus hits and kind of puts a hold on everything. But now more than ever, you know, our local businesses need the Osprey Observer. They need an outlet like this to continue to let people know what's going on in their community and how we can help these local businesses survive through this crisis and, uh, and be there for us once everything gets back to normal. Absolutely. So I've just put together a little uh, letter I kind of wanted to go over and just tell the community. I wish I could just do it right off the cuff, but I can't. I get emotional. So I just want to kind of go over this with a special message out to the community. Then we're just going to talk about a few tips and tricks that we have for small businesses right now. And then we'll look forward to the next episode, but I think we'll just get better and better as we go. So um, wanted to just remind people, I'm sure hopefully in some point somewhere you've received or seen a copy of the Osprey Observer. We've been honored and privileged for 18 years to be a part of this community. We've been publishing community newspapers that cover local news, sports, people doing good things, winning awards. Um, we cover good news. Milestones such as 100th birthday parties. Those are some of our favorite stories. Covering residents, winning awards, launching inventions, writing books. Last month we had a Riverview resident who was a, a contestant on The Biggest Loser, the national TV show, and she did amazing and she looks gorgeous. So we'll be following up with her. We celebrate as our community welcomes new businesses and we mourn when founders and leaders pass. But we're here, we're here to cover those events. Through this unprecedented crisis and during the upcoming months, we've made a commitment to staff our business and shift our business model to match what's going on in our community. We've stretched our expenses out to the lowest possible amount. We've leveraged all of our vendors so that we can keep all of our team working in the office. Uh, we're working with a printer, with the U.S. Postal Service, which is how we deliver most of our newspapers, and with all of our advertisers who are all small businesses to stay relevant and in business. We're here to support them. We're working one-on-one -on -one with every single business to see what they need from us and how we can support them. But we do need your help. If you're a small business, we need communication from you to know what you need. Do you need a press release written, a story written? Do you need your menu distributed through our social media channels? Do you need to be as part of our e-blast? How can we help support the message of how you're adjusting, changing, and, and accommodating the quarantine rules in your business to make people feel safe coming to your business as your customers? Are you washing hands, creating new protocols for your staff, for your clients? Um, some of our best friends at Canine Cabana immediately are doing kiss and go lanes for their dogs. The families aren't getting out of the cars anymore. The staff is coming out with their own equipment, their own leashes, leashing the pets, taking them inside for a wonderful day of play and bathing. But those people don't have to get in the car and that's how they're protecting their staff, team members, and also the owners of the animals. So that's just one example that we can help get out there. We want to do whatever we can to help our local small businesses recover from the coronavirus, from the quarantine, from 
the changes that have happened in such a rapid speed to our businesses that have never happened before. We're all just pivoting. For us, in the meantime, we're getting back to our grassroots marketing that helped to grow our business in the first place, starting 18 years ago when we had one edition and 750 copies, and now we have five editions and 200 pages of the paper each and every month. We publish five times a month out of our offices. We still do have a few staff on board every day working in the office, nine to five, Monday through Friday, but most of our team we've been able to make remote. We're using Zoom for our staff meetings. We're doing proofing electronically now so that people don't have to come into the office. We're doing everything we can to protect our team and to encourage and guide them to getting out into the community and covering news. We were honored and thrilled last week to be able to announce that we received a Facebook journalism program grant for $5,000 to cover coronavirus and COVID-19 stories. So we were able to expand our coverage with our team and send them out to the community to find those good news stories. And we're covering it from the aspect of good news. How are charities accommodating? Food banks, how are people making masks and getting them into the healthcare workers? Those are the kind of stories we love to cover and keep giving to the community. And we're gonna be here. We're gonna be here for you. So how can we help? That's what we need from you. Well, thank you so much. And again, you know, I moved here back in 2006. And, you know, certainly when I moved into the area, I mean, even though I was pretty far out uh, west, you know, I, I was living out west of 75. And I remember getting, you know, the Osprey Observer at my Publix. And, 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 and it was just, it was so cool, because again, there's it's almost back to really the early days of media, right? The early days of print was hyper local uh, information, stories that nobody's covering, you know, and talking about businesses that, you know, can't afford to advertise on TV and radio and, and some of these bigger newspapers and, and to, and, and people still enjoy, you know, the, just the act of sitting there and sitting down with a cup of coffee, exactly sitting down with that hard print cover uh, there's something about it. There's something kind of romantic about it, and 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 the fact that it is good news, and especially right now, it's so hard to find good news out there. I know a lot of people, given that they're home quarantined, not being able to go to work in most cases, um, have pre pretty much shut out all of the news, other than maybe for an hour or so, because it's just so negative and and it weighs so heavily on people. But you know, I loved what you touched on, which is two key things for business owners and, and we can go, you know, and start talking about again, how businesses have adapted and, and offering some tips for those who maybe are still trying to figure that out. Um, but one of the key things that I love that you said was getting back to grassroots, getting back to what has always worked. Um, and, you know, again, you've built the Osprey Observer from the ground up. You've seen this community just explode over the past, you know, 15 plus years. And so uh, in many ways, like you were just saying, our businesses and our livelihoods are changing in many cases permanently. Um, but I would say, like you were mentioning Canine Cabana, they're probably finding practices that are really great that they were like, oh, we're gonna probably keep doing this after you know, even all of this blows over. And I think it's, it's, it's giving people an opportunity to rethink how they operate, rethink their operations, rethink them. And some of this out of sheer precaution, I think is just gonna become standard practice, right? Right, exactly. And I can say even in our offices, it absolutely has become that. Our Zoom staff meetings, we can do remotely. It's actually saving people time. They don't have to do the travel time to get into the meetings on weekly Monday mornings and get back out. They can be right into business. The second thing is our digital proofing. We kind of always had that ability available through technology, but this crisis forced us to utilize it because we were trying to do social distancing as much as possible and keep people at home. And it's really turned out to be a very efficient and effective way for everybody to have a glance at the paper before it actually hits the presses. So a few little tips that we wanted to go over today as well is talking about getting back to that grassroots. And for a lot of business owners who started out as a small business and kind of grew over the years, it's a time of reflection and getting back to those core values that got us to where we were. 
uh, just a few simple, simple things that make such a huge impact that small businesses now have time for is if you've been neglecting your Facebook page, your website, your social media pages, it's time to update them with a message to your customers. Uh, also, putting out a message. Did you put out a letter? Immediately when this happened, we started our messaging of we're open and still printing newspapers. We wanted people to know that we're still gonna be printing and publishing newspapers even if we couldn't go to the office. We can do a lot of things uh, distance wise. However, we do have the capacity at the office to keep everyone six feet apart and they have their own space and they're able to come in and it's by choice at this point. Every staff member has an option to work from home or work in the office and so we keep a small crew in there. But um, especially that Facebook page and especially for restaurants because right now we know restaurants are suffering dramatically. They have takeout only. The ones that I see that I am making a point to go out and pick up dine local at least twice a week is the ones who do a family pack. Hey, here's what we've got tonight. I've got a family pack. It's going to include everything. It's going to include your tea, your sweet tea. It's going to include everything. It's just so easy to order. Give me the family pack. Yeah. Otherwise, I will go in and pick and choose menu items, but make it simple. Make it simple for me to pick a, a number one, two, three, or four. Make your best four dishes. Make them simple, but put the message out there. Is it easy for me to order? You know? Well, I think that's also kind of been the fun part to see how these restaurants have adapted. Um, you know, and, and, and it's unfortunate, right, that these, these are the forces that require us to see, you know, who has the adaptability to evolve their business model. But as you're saying, I've seen hamburger kits, you know, uh, restaurants putting together hamburger kits for people to, to, uh, to buy as takeout, including, like you said, the family meals. And actually, I think one of my favorite ones is also we're seeing restaurants and, and now the bigger restaurants, your, your kind of corporate guys have kind of caught on to it a little bit. But uh, the bulk groceries, which I found really interesting, where some of these restaurants are saying, hey, we buy a lot of this stuff. If you need chicken, if you need ground beef or turkey or vegetables. Or toilet paper. Yeah. Toilet paper. It's like, <laughs> hey, we get it at a discount. We buy lots of it. Just get it from us and, you know, save yourself the trip to the grocery store where you may have to stand outside for half an hour before you get in. Or, you know, if you're overly concerned about coming into contact with people who might, you know, have the virus or just in, as a precaution, uh, you know, again, this is one more precaution that you can take by just having those things ordered and they'll either deliver them to you or you can go by and pick them up, but minimize that interaction in, in order to kind of help us get closer to getting back to normal. Exactly. Another tip I've got is can your business go mobile? Can you do drop, you know, doorstop drop off? Do you really need to see your customer or is it just the product needs to get to the customer? And is there a method of setting up an online ordering system with no contact through Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, whatever you can do. Square even has a capacity. For instance, I was talking about service businesses, lawn care, pool cleaning, your pressure washers. You don't really physically need to see them. They come out, you do the quote, can be contact free with email. They could do the work and get paid. And really they can do all of that no contact. Well, and, and not to sound like a Facebook advertisement here, but it is maybe the most powerful tool that we have at our disposal during this time. But you can sell items through your Facebook page. People can place orders through your Facebook page. Um, okay. People can pay for help. services. Oh, yeah, people can make appointments. People can pay for services. Um, really, there's no limit to the type of business that can do transactions, even through your Facebook page. And like you said, uh, the problem is most people aren't aware of these things. But that's part of the reason we're doing these videos. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, Marie, you know, you know that previously, uh, you know, I, I've been in the digital space for a long time. And I'm happy to help any business owners who are looking to make that evolution and, and make those adaptations because we are at a crisis situation beyond the virus where every week is going to determine whether or not a business survives this. Um, it, it, we are at that much of a crucial point. And, and we're already seeing that certain businesses are just not gonna come back, unfortunately. Uh, but the ones that have adapted and, and, and fought and, and again, gone back to some of these grassroots um, or even just experimenting. You know, there's a restaurant that a friend of mine owns and they do Facebook Live almost every hour, every day. 
So they just have like the phone just sitting like in a key position okay. in, in the kitchen and they're talking to people and people are writing them messages. Meanwhile, they're cooking people's food and all that kind of thing. So they're promoting their restaurant. They're engaging with their customers. They're driving business. Um, and they're reminding people that, hey, we're here, we're open, and we want to serve you, and we want to stay open, we want to survive this crisis, and they're incredibly grateful to everybody who shows them support, not only you know, financially, but also even through the Facebook feed, and, and it makes for interesting content, you know, you get on there and see them cooking and engaging with their customers, it's, it's actually something kind of fun to watch as well, and, and it's something that very few restaurants or businesses are doing. But why not? You're sitting there, you know, you're it's it's you and maybe one or two other people, you know, look for different ways to engage with your customers um, that, again, may prove to be a new way to advertise your business. Exactly. I've really appreciated and taken full advantage of a lot of the at home activities. I've got three kids at home I need to entertain on a daily basis. And now I'm a teacher. My husband and I have become teachers, really never expected to become a kindergarten teacher, you know, and then I've got a 15 year old and a 19 year old who is home from college. So the college kid is fine. He's on his own. He's doing his own thing. The 15 year old is doing amazingly well adapting, but he's of the right generation. It's fine. I, 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 would definitely, hand, I would definitely have to be calling in a virtual tutor, uh, especially for the <laughs> The math stuff, uh, I barely got through that in my own high school days. So. Oh, thank goodness he hasn't asked for any help. <laughs> Absolutely. But kindergarten requires a lot of one-on-one, -on -one. you know, a lot of guidance, a lot of um, just hands-on, which I'm enjoying. But we also needed things to keep us active and busy. So just in our house and from some local businesses, we've done make and take cookie kits with cookies and icing and sprinkles, and you can decorate at home. We spend hours making cookies. I've done the AR workshop and Art Monkey, a couple of local art places have done kits. Everything's ready in the bag, paint, sponges, gloves, paint brushes, full instructions, vinyl, yeah. paint, and step by step, I can sit and it probably between waiting for paint to dry can, you know, take a couple of hours to do. It's been just a dream. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's so funny. And you're talking about, you know, kind of new ways for us to engage with our kids. And, and, and certainly like you have a kindergartner, I have a four year old and, you know, we want to make sure that they're continuing to learn and develop, you know, yeah. while they're at home, you know, and it's funny because coincidentally I went to Costco and I bought this big pack of little snack size bags of Cheez-Its but it's like the Scrabble edition. So they have letters printed on them. So it's cool because now I've got her into the habit to where she'll show me the cheese it and she'll be like, what letter is this? And so I say, okay, let's go through it. You know, you know, what does it spell and how does it sound? And then if she gets it right, she gets to eat it, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, it's just you know, a, a different way to engage and, and teach them. And, and again, I, it's so funny just how, and, and interesting really how, this is really changing everything. Uh, it's really touching on everything we do on a daily basis. And, you know, even from emptying out the piggy bank to count how much changes in it and, and things like that. Um, it, it, it's, there's so many, re we're so fortunate in the sense that, you know, we can take the opportunity to realize how many resources we truly do have our, at our disposal. Um, I mean, YouTube has no shortage of activities and videos to learn from and, and, and places to get ideas from, you know, Pinterest as well. And, uh, you know, so for the things that people are having to do at home, like you said, and when engaging with your family members, uh, there's all kinds of, of fun stuff out there. And, and yeah, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed being, you know, in, you know, in, in between four walls all day. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that you can experiment with to see, you know, what, how it can change the dynamic in your household. Exactly. I've been really impressed with our small businesses who've been able to really immediately adapt, change their business model. Um, an example that comes to mind is Rolling Pin Kitchen Emporium that has a gorgeous indoor kitchen demonstration kitchen where he does demos and he does food and beautiful dinner parties for up to 30 people. Well, he immediately started doing online video tutorials, make, wow. make your own pizza at home. And he sells the products also to make the pizza so you can call and do curbside pickup for the ingredients or the gadgets. So he's done a great job of just adjusting to kind of the new 
way of doing things, the new way to communicate with folks. Well, um, and, and potentially new revenue models. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's one of these things where maybe he didn't think that, that, you know, he could make money doing these videos. And this is something, again, for people that sell products or teach people how to make things or, you know, these videos are valuable. I mean, not only are they fun and they're great ways to engage with your, your customers, but those are videos too that then you can turn into instructional videos that down the road that maybe there's some revenue that you can generate from it. And so there's, there's also opportunities for new revenue streams that maybe your business hasn't fully realized. And that's one of the other things you might want to take a look at. Exactly. I, I just recognize and I want to realize that at least for another month, probably until school goes back into session, we need to be flexible. We need to be understanding. We need to shop local as much as possible. Every dollar that we spend, they can go to support a local family and keep another local business alive. We need to do a few other things we've done is vegetable delivery services. I have always loved Cypress Creek co-op. They do food, um, vegetable box distribution in a co-op style in six locations every single week. I can't always get to that location. A new business has opened up um, greens to your door that just drops off a medium or large bin at my door once a week. I never, I've never seen the people. I've never met them. I Venmo the money in and my beautiful fruits and vegetables arrive at the door once a week. They didn't have this business five weeks ago. Wow. They were a house cleaning business that when the quarantine happened and many people didn't want to have anyone into their home. So a lot of their clients cut back, they adjusted, they found a business that they had an interest in and created something really special. And now they have a bonafide business that will continue past the quarantine. I'm confident because it's so simple and I'll always be just getting my delivery right at my front door. And then I get creative over the week, the five days we cook at home, I get creative with what's in my box. And then the other two were going out to local restaurants to support our local restaurants. And I really appreciate the curbside pickups so that I don't have to get out of my car. I can just <laughs> put in my order and grab and go for my family. So we are in a whole new world. We're taking the rules that we had for the Austrian Observer for the last 18 years, and we're pretty much rewriting the story. We're saying, how can we be there for our businesses? What do they need from us most urgently? The minute that high school graduations were canceled, we said, we've got to do something for our grads. We created for the first, you know, we've done it a couple of times, but we've never really spent time with it. A really discounted eighth of a page full color that a parent can put their graduates picture in, that they could put a little write up about them and that they can be printed in the newspaper, but they'll also end up online forever in our digital archive. They'll be there. Then we sat back with our staff and we said, wait a minute, we could do this for graduations. What about with births? Cause now you can't really have a, a party to celebrate a new baby, yeah. what about significant birthdays? Birthday parties are right. different and changed. Let's do it for birthday parties, let's do it for announcements. Um, and one thing we've never done in 18 years is really do memorials. Okay. We just, you know, that was something that, that really got printed in the daily papers. It wasn't really something we paid attention to. However, if somebody wanted to put a memorial in for a family member, because now you can't really have a large service, right? We're going to do it. We have to, we have to kind of change our business methodology, our thought process and say, what does our community need right there and be there for them? Well, and, and you're talking about, again, how much it, this has changed, you know, again, large gatherings, especially, you know, and so, you know, two things that come to mind is uh, one is a company that I have a partnership with. It's an event production company. They do DJs and they do karaoke and trivia nights. Well, they've actually taken their trivia nights online and they've partnered okay. with local restaurants to give away gift cards. Um, and, you know, that's providing people entertainment you know, something to distract them while they're sitting at home. Uh, and it's also creating that awareness that these local restaurants, these local businesses are still open. Um, and it serves as a vehicle for a company that has been hit incredibly hard, like an event production company, because all, all gatherings have been shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, this company depends on weddings and corporate events and trivia nights and karaoke nights and things like that. All that got canceled. 
Um, and so this has been a way, again, to evolve and adapt to the current uh, situation. Uh, but, you know, talking about, you know, how do we share, uh, you know, again, these kind of milestone events, you know, for our family members. And, you know, yesterday, as a matter of fact, we celebrated my grandmother's 83rd birthday via Zoom, uh, you know, and you know, we had, we had family members from Canada. We had family members from, you know, Miami and Tampa and all over the place. And it was so cool. It was so different for us to be able to gather. And it ended up turning into a three hour zoom call oh my know, God. Because, because we just kept talking and, you know, and, and people were like, Oh, I'm just going to start cooking. And, you know, and so <laughs> it was, it became like, you know, we might as well all have been in the same room. You know, it was wonderful. It was that, that, fun and engaging to be able to see everyone and and then talk I'm about so, everything that's going on. I'm so glad you said that because we did the same thing. We've gotten our family members who are, don't live in the state onto Zoom. We all, yeah. you know, we always had that ability all these years, but right. having the quarantine, it was nice to be able to see people and put the face on camera mm -hmm. and we finally made everybody you know, learn how to zoom and download and get their webcams working, right. and get their speakers working. So it's been really, it's, it's actually been nice that way. I well, kind of want to wrap up Jonathan because yeah. I don't want to, you know, have too long of a video for our first one, but clearly we need to come back because we have more to talk about. That's so right. we need to come back and do this again. And I know we want to bring on speakers. We yeah. want to, you know, eventually get out remote to businesses and do all kinds of different things. So we have a lot of ideas. Uh, editor at ospreyobserver.com is my personal email address. Perfect. I'm always open to ideas, to thoughts, um, you know. Questions. Questions. When you yeah. were talking about um, the trivia and going remote, it made me think of um, flattery. We created a restaurant bingo, a dine local bingo. We created a bingo sheet. You just have to go to any three, email it in, a picture of your receipts, and we're sending them a $25 gift card to a local restaurant. So. And we didn't cool. invent that idea. I wish I could take credit for it. It was such a wonderful idea for small businesses. The first one I saw was the South Shore Chamber that put something together for the restaurants. Okay. And so, you know, at this point, no idea that assists a local business is arbitrarily anyone's. Right. It's whatever yeah. can benefit our local businesses belong to everybody. But we are here um, to assist the local businesses. We don't charge for press releases in our newspaper. And our press release submission form is right on our website, our ospreyobserver.com. We encourage every single business that has something to share that has changed during COVID-19, during the quarantine, during the coronavirus battle, send it to us. And we'll be happy to put their name in the paper for free. We do not charge for that. We, as a community of newspaper, belong to our readers. We're 100% supported by the advertising within, which is what gets us into the mailboxes for free. So we are here to support our small businesses 100%. Anything we can do to keep our small businesses alive and get them through the crisis so that we can get back into business, we're here. Well, and Marie, really quick, because again, a lot of people aren't leaving their homes. So, you know, again, thanks to the technology and the businesses that are able to allow people to stay home, especially during a crisis like this. Um, for those who want to sign up for a delivery version of your paper, what do they need to do? They would just have to go online because okay. the way our newspapers delivered it is a very specific demographic of homeowner. Okay. So if you get it at your house, it means you're within the cut of the demographic that qualifies. We Got go to a single okay. family home in a master plan, plan development with a certain average household income. However, we always publish every single page online under the archives link. Every page is electronically on and then every story gets put on our website. So we want to get the information to every single person mm -hmm. and we're working on a subscription method. Cool. So that's a great tip. Um, we're working on it so, <laughs> that, so that the day we go to press, it takes about four to five days for the printer and the post office to get it into the mailbox. Mm -hmm. If we can get an early bird e edition into the inboxes of those who have an interest in being an early subscriber, sort of a VIP reader, and they'll be in the know quicker than their neighbors, then we're working on something like that.
Awesome. Well, Marie, thank you so much. Again, thank you everybody for joining us for the launch of My Osprey TV. Uh, again, thank you so much uh, for everything the Osprey Observer does uh, for the community and for our local businesses. Again, shop local, support your local businesses, and we're going to keep you up to date again on what's happening in the community as the Osprey Observer has done for so many years. Uh, we hope you join us for the next one. Say bye, Marie. Bye. We'll see you next time. <laughs> bye, everybody.